And Andrew, we saw very well in Aston that the result was going Labor's way. We're not picking up any of that at all in the primary or two-party referred. And the thing is, it's not happening in any part of the electorate. Let's take a look at one of the booths that's been pretty typical so far, and it's actually showing a small swing towards the LNP. On the primary vote here, you can see a dominant Cameron Caldwell. The point about this, though, is the match swing. So this is a really good booth anyway. Uh, ignore the Gavin part there. This is a really good booth anyway for the LNP. The point here is it's a 1.64% swing matched compared to last time. So he was going well in this booth last time. He's going even better this time around. And that's happening in all the booths we've seen two-party preferred so far. When we're looking at this statewide, remember we've got a 10.6% margin he starts on. A really big buffer. You want to see big swings happening. On primary, well, that's obviously a no contest on primary. And as well, the other thing here on match swings right now, we're seeing Cameron Caldwell 4.5% swing towards him on primary. Labor actually losing a bit of vote. And then some funny things happening with the miners. Legalised cannabis, a, a huge surge. They're running here for the first time. They have run in the Senate before and polled here pretty well. And then the Greens losing quite a bit of vote. We do see this often in by-elections, the minor parties getting more of a vote. But on those numbers, as you can see, he's in no danger at all whatsoever. When we look at two-party preferred, this again is a matched swing, 1.14% towards the LNP. We've got several thousand votes in. Beyond what we've seen there on Two Party Preferred, we're seeing uh, Pimpama East, that was a, the best uh, booth last time for Labor, is actually swinging away from Letitia Del Fabro on a primary sense and will go away from her on Two Party Preferred as well. That was Labor's best booth and her best one last time. She's not picking up any ground there going backwards. We're looking in the north of the electorate, the south and the central part. Nothing swinging towards Labor and it's only early doors. We're saying the LNP holds onto this seat. Cameron Caldwell will be the next member for Fadden. All right, 7.28pm, Chief Election Analyst Tom Connell calls it for the LNP. Pretty clear, not much of a swing on either. Thanks for that, Tom. Let me go back to the panel, get their reactions. Murray Watt, it is all over, isn't it? And it's not looking that promising for Labor tonight in terms of picking up a swing. Oh, look, I, I think the really important figure there, uh, Andrew, is a very small swing to the LNP. Uh, as you know, we've gone into this uh, by-election not only expecting to lose and lose handsomely, uh, but we went in expecting the LNP to be able to pick up a swing of around 4%. Um, so, you know, if, if, if the best that an opposition can do uh, for all of the issues that they claim are going on out there is a swing of 1% or 2%, I don't think they'd be patting themselves too well on the back with that kind of result. James McGrath, what's your reaction to that? Oh, th these are early figures. And as I said in my opening comments, there are a range of factors we need to take into account. But this is a little bit of a kick in the shins, maybe a little bit higher up the body to the Labor Party campaign, which was a campaign that was all about robo-debt, all about Stuart Robert, and it was a very well-funded campaign with the unions and the Labor Party. So I think the Labor Party might be regretting actually running in Fadden now because they haven't got the swing they thought they were going to get and they haven't embarrassed the Liberal National Party. And Peter Dutton, by the way, has spent more time in Fadden than Anthony Albanese. Uh, he's been down here campaigning constantly. And I think you'll find that Peter Dutton is a net asset and a net positive for the LNP and for Cameron Caldwell. And uh, Anthony Chisholm, the anti-Dutton campaign, the RoboDebt campaign, doesn't seem to have had any impact. Not so far, but um, we think it's important to highlight uh, how dysfunctional the previous government was. Uh, we don't think Australians have forgotten uh, what the LNP government was like, how dysfunctional and incompetent they were. Uh, and they see a contrast in the way that we operate, where uh, we are measured, we are competent, and we are focused on the Australian people. Um, that's a vast difference from what they had under our predecessors. Karen Andrews, what's your reaction to the early figures? Uh, well, it's clearly not a good night for Labor based on these figures, and yes, they are early um, figures, but uh, I know that uh, that they would say that they um, expected that, uh, that they would lose um, some margin uh, in this election, but that wasn't how they were playing it on the ground. They were putting their heart and soul into uh, into trying to do damage to the Liberal National Party and our candidate in, in Fadden. So I would think that for Labor, this is a very disappointing outcome and maybe they need to rethink some of their, their strategy. 
they they didn't um, they they didn't really get any cut through when they started to talk about um, the negative with the um, with the uh, robo debt scheme. Um, it just didn't cut it with. Um, with the people in, in Fadden. They were very focused on cost of living. They clearly don't think that the Labor government is addressing uh, their concerns. And, um, and I think it's time that at least the federal government has a bit of a rethink about what they're doing. But for Anastasia uh, Palaszczuk, and I know that clearly that is the, the state government, we actually ran very hard on crime because uh, crime, particularly youth crime on the Gold Coast, is... A significant issue. So this is a pretty major wake-up call to the Palaszczuk government that they're not tracking very well at all and they need to take some serious action about crime, they need to take some serious action about housing affordability and they need to try and demonstrate that they've got what it takes, which in my view they clearly don't. All right, Karen Andrews, James McGrath, Murray Watt, Anthony Chisholm, thanks so much for your time.